Hello and welcome to Credit Matters TV, a weekly show highlighting Standard & Poor's analysis and global perspective on the latest credit market developments. I'm Jeff Sexton for Standard & Poor's Financial Institution Ratings. Joining me today is Robert Hansen, Director in Standard & Poor's Financial Institution Ratings, for a discussion on commercial real estate and in particular what the outlook means for banks and their loan portfolios and our bank ratings. Welcome, Robert, and thank you for joining us. Thank you, Jeff. So let's start off by going over what our outlook is for commercial real estate for the bank sector. And in our view, will commercial real estate be the next shoe to drop for the banking sector? Well, we actually think the worst could be over for commercial real estate as it relates to U.S. banks. Um, however, having said that, even though we don't expect the sector to get substantially worse, we don't think we're out of the woods yet. Uh, Non-performing loans have started to peak in the last couple of quarters. However, net charge-offs remain particularly high, which uh, leads us to believe that there could be some additional losses over the next couple of years. So what's behind that view, though, that the, the worst is over as far as commercial real estate uh, is concerned? Well, a few reasons. First, the home builder construction and land loans have declined substantially for the rated U.S. banks. And it's really these loan types that have had the highest loss severities and have had the highest losses. It's really these loans that have been the most toxic. Uh, and with lower exposures, we think that will translate into lower loan losses. However, even though we're seeing some further deterioration among the income-producing commercial real estate, it's not enough to offset the improvement we're seeing from lower loan losses on construction loans. You know, also keep in mind that the economy is gradually improving, which is translating into some improvement in occupancy rates and also some higher rental rates in certain geographies. And finally, we're starting to see some improvement in property values as well as some improvement in terms of the number of transactions and the volume of transactions. So both of those should also bode well for future loan performance. So you mentioned the economy, so let's take this discussion to a little bit of a broader level. How far are we through the current cycle? Well, we think we're about three years into the current downturn, but we still think we have another couple of years to go before the vast majority of the losses have been uh, recognized and incurred by U.S. banks. Um, we estimate that roughly 60% of the cumulative losses that we expect have already been charged off by U.S. rated banks. Now, we think this level of uh, cumulative losses that we expect is manageable for the U.S. banks because capital ratios have trended higher in recent years. Uh, liquidity has improved generally, and we expect most of the banks that we rate to be profitable this year. Breaking it down for us, are the banks uh, simply kicking the can down the road or extending and pretending? Well, certainly banks have a considerable amount of flexibility as it relates to how they account for their commercial real estate loans, as it relates to what loans they count as non-performing, how much they charge off, and whether or not renegotiated loans are counted as TDRs, troubled debt restructurings. Now, we think that the vast majority of renegotiated loans are counted as troubled debt restructurings. These are loans to borrowers where a concession is made and uh, the borrower is in distress. Now these types of loans, TDRs, have actually risen across the industry, uh, particularly for the regional banks and the large regional banks. But even including these TDRs in our calculations, it looks as though non-performing loans, loan performance for commercial real estate has basically stabilized over the last two or three quarters. So based on that, uh, finally, what is the potential impact of commercial real estate? Uh, what are the implications for our bank ratings? Well, we've seen a general improvement in the industry in terms of industry fundamentals, and so that's actually eased pressure amongst some of our regional banks. Um, and our outlooks are typically less negative than they were a year ago. Um, furthermore, um, our ratings currently incorporate the expectation that commercial real estate losses will remain elevated for the next couple of years. So we don't expect a large number of rating actions as it relates to issues regarding commercial real estate. However, having said that, there could be some exceptions, particularly for unprofitable 
regional banks that have relatively large commercial real estate exposures, or they're operating in particularly challenging geographies, namely in the, the southeast, the southwest, parts of the Midwest, or Puerto Rico. But generally speaking, uh, we think the industry environment is generally improving for U.S. banks. So in our view, the worst is over, and uh, with the noticeable few exceptions. On that note, Robert, I wanted to thank you for joining us today for this discussion of the commercial real estate sector and what it will mean for the banking sector and for bank ratings going forward. And on behalf of Standard & Poor's, thank you and take care.